Welcome Facebook friends and family. We're glad you're with us. Page 154, if you want to look in the book, I see Phil's grabbed the book. You are Lord of creation and Lord of my life, Lord of the land and the sea. You were Lord of the heavens before there was time, and Lord of all, Lord, you will be. We bow down and we worship you, Lord. We bow down and we King of creation and King of my life, King of the land and the sea. You were King of the heaven before there was time, and King of all kings you will be. We bow down and we crown you the King. We bow down and we crown We bow down and we crown you the king, king of all kings you will be. Very good. Surely goodness and mercy. And Psalms 23 tells us that it will follow us all the days of our life. Pilgrim was I in a wandering In the cold night of sin I did roam When Jesus the kind shepherd found me And now I am on my way home Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me All the days, all the days of my life. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days, all the days of my life. He restoreth my soul when I'm weary. He giveth me strength day by day. He leads me beside the still waters. He guards me each step of the way. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days, all the days of my life. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days, all the days of my life when I walk through the dark lonesome valley my Savior will walk with me there and safely his great hand will lead me to the mansions he's gone to prepare surely goodness and mercy shall follow me All the days, all the days of my life Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me All the days, all the days of my life Very good, and you may be seated Great to have you back tonight. Good to see you in the house of the Lord. Uh, thanks for everyone watching on Facebook tonight. On our from home, we're hope and trust that you're doing well. Uh, seems like we've got a few of our families just not feeling the greatest, and who knows exactly what's going on. And I'm sure 
We'll figure that out in eternity, exactly what the truth is. But I know the crud's going around. That's what I call the coronavirus, the crud. We don't like it. We don't want it. We don't want no part of it. We don't want no one getting hurt, dying, feeling sick. So let's be careful out there. Do our due diligence. Whatever the Lord leads you to protect yourself, I think that's what would be uh, a great thing to be called for. That's what would be great to be called for. So make sure you do that. Be thinking about one another. I, we, um, I think we already passed it out there. There's the, the prayer sheet out there. Take a, take a moment just to read over that uh, this week and pray for one another. Uh, some of the updated missionary prayer requests are there. And uh, you can kind of connect with that. Hey, I want to congratulate you. You guys did a great, great job. Uh, many of you got your... Uh, church directory forms in and got a picture and so it looks like we're doing very very well it looks like we might be able to launch that by next week and and uh we're still got a few names that we're going to need to kind of get in there some of our winter visitors but we'll have a good working uh base to continue to add to so we're excited about that i appreciate you getting the pictures i think we're going to go ahead and uh take pictures next week also and and then we can kind of move on from that, and uh, we'll go ahead and present that to you guys. And we'll also do some printing, too, of that for those of you that would like that. We'll kind of work on that situation there, okay? So we'll do that. So <clears throat> there's a study, and, uh, and, and I thought I would just kind of um, uh, share this with you in the beginning as we're going to go over to Second Thessalonians. Second Thessalonians, just for a couple minutes tonight, and I want to commend you for being here uh, tonight. Uh, you know, uh, you say, preacher, I could be sleeping, I could be watching football, I could be doing all those things, and I know some of you are probably doing it on your phone right now, but no, just kidding. Uh, but uh, I'm glad you're not sleeping yet. Hopefully, uh, the Word of God will be a blessing to you. But listen, uh, I'm very glad that you're here, and I'm glad that you're here to listen and be a part of and getting the Word of God uh, to help us. There was a study um, among 4,000 evangelical uh, teenagers or young people, and uh, the question went about, uh, how many of you read the Bible during the week? How many read the Bible during the week? And then this, this kind of survey was given and they ask questions in this survey about reading of the Bible. And they ask questions about um, how was uh, uh, depression? How was your depression? How was your anger, your bitterness? Uh, do you use sub you know, alcohol? Uh, are you involved in pornography? Uh, are you, do, you share, uh, do you share the gospel with people? And so this was a, you know, kind of a faith-based kind of a survey of this and they asked the question and they found out some interesting things about reading the bible during the week and so you're here tonight because you love the word of god i won't commend you for that but this is what they kind of found out uh, about the word of god if they read the bible three times a week three times a week okay uh that was kind of like sunday morning maybe su sunday night maybe wednesday night and maybe with the times that they went to church but if they read the bible three times a week really um some of those things like depression and anger and substance abuse, those types of things really didn't change too much uh, by reading the Bible just three times a week. Uh, but what they found out is that if you read the Bible four times a week, that's just one extra time, from three times to four times a week, they said depression went down amongst this group here 30%. Bitterness was down 32%. Alcohol was down 57%. Pornography down 63%. And if they read the Bible four times a week, they were 200 times more likely to share Jesus with someone else. If they just read the Bible from three times a week to, to four. Uh, 250 more times likely to say, hey, I want to disciple somebody. I'll help someone learn the Bible. I'll help someone uh, get an answer from the Bible uh, for their life. I was thinking about other people. So let me encourage you to recognize that there is power in the Word of God. It's quick, 
It's powerful. It's sharper than any two-edged sword, okay? Piercing and dividing asunder of soul and spirit and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. We need the Word of God to help us figure out who we are in Jesus. Don't let the world tell you who you are in Jesus. Let the Word of God tell you. And if you get in it four times a week, it will bless your heart. I think every day would be a good thing. Amen? Every day would be a good thing. And what kind of change could happen in our lives? Because, you know, most of these teenagers, they're evangelical. They might not even believe the Bible is all of the Word of God. They might not even believe that it's, it's anything. These are nominal people. And they say it's helped them immensely in their faith. So I think the Word of God uh, is very, very helpful. So tonight, I want to just give you uh, some thoughts tonight about help for your troubled mind. Help for your troubled mind, okay? Help for your troubled mind. This morning we talked uh, about a hindrance to growing in Christ, to being refined. Uh, what kind of things are hindering us? Last week we dealt in the morning service about the blame game, and we talked about the brain game or the, the mind games that we sometimes play with ourselves and play with the Lord. And, of course, those hinder us. Our mind hinders us. And um, we can be uh, so very, very fearful. And it can affect us in so many different ways that we just need a little help. We get troubled. We get fearful. We get troubled. So 2 Thessalonians um, is the second book that Paul wrote to the Thessalonians, those that are Thessalonica. He wrote this to them, and he is reaffirming some things. In fact, he has to actually correct some doctrine here. You see, there were some false teachers that came in after Paul was there in the book of 1 Thessalonians. He taught them. He gave them instruction about what the Bible says, what Jesus wanted them to be as a church. And now he's writing back because false teachers have come in and he is needing to correct them in some of their beliefs. And he has to reiterate that. And we're going to see in chapter number one of 2 Thessalonians uh, maybe just a little bit of what this problem might be. Notice he says, Paul... And so Vandus and Timothy is unto the church of the Thessalonians in God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. So Paul says as a collective being in verse number 1, Paul, Savannah, and Timothy says, We are bound to thank God always for you. So they were thanking God for these believers. Brethren, as is meet, because that your faith groweth exceedingly... And the charity of every one of you all toward each other aboundeth. Now, that's a good thing. When our faith is growing and our charity aboundeth towards one another. What is that? Uh, what's the idea of charity aboundeth? That means that love is abounding. I mean, love covers. Love is abound. It's a good thing. And so this is happening here. Uh, he, so often, I kind of tend to, it's kind of like that phone call. Do you want the good news or the bad news, right? This was the good news. And then there's going to be some bad news. So let me, or like the guy says, hey, you know, I, I, really, um, I really like your hair today, but that tie you wore did not match. <laughs> you know, you want to sweet talk at the beginning, right? And then you get down to nitty gritty what's really going on, right? And so Paul is doing that. He's commending them. They're saying, hey, your faith was growing. He says in verse 4, uh, so that we ourselves glory in you and the churches of God for your patience and faith in all your persecutions and tribulations that ye endure. So these believers, this church here, was enduring some great persecutions. Notice he says all of them and that they're enduring. This is difficult stuff. This is hardness. This is harsh stuff. This is things that man, is getting to them. I, I'm, uh, I know several people that are in constant pain. Just nonstop pain. I mean, it never goes away. It's just always there. 
constant ringing in the ears maybe, and it's just always ringing. I think I go crazy. And it does a toll on you. And pretty soon, you begin to be troubled in your mind. Pretty soon, you, you say things you wouldn't because you're irritated, because all of that energy that you normally would is battling that constant pain just to try to be normal. And you begin to get weak in your mind. They're suffering some persecutions here in verse 4. And Paul gives it a title. He says, which is a manifest token. It's something that's brought to light of the righteous judgment of God that ye may be counted worthy of the kingdom of God for which ye also suffer. That's a spiritual key. Hey, this is what God is doing here. And he he says it's a good thing that you can be counted worthy. He says, seeing it is a righteous thing with God to recompense tribulation to them that trouble you. So he's saying, and, and guess what? You're, you're being endured. you got tribulation. you got hardships, persecution. He says, guess what? Uh, I want you to know that God's the kind of God, that he's that righteous God, that he's going to repay tribulation to them that are doing this to you they're not going to get away with this scot free they're not going to just do this without judgment sometimes we think how come the world is getting away with everything and you know what i'm trying to live for god i'm trying to do what god wants me to do and you know what the sinner is always here seems like everything is going great by the way that's what we see it's not necessarily what's true sin is good for a season but after that destruction okay we don't always get to see that part. But sometimes we see while we're in our struggle, we're in our trouble. And then he says in verse 7, And to you who are troubled, rest with us. When the Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels. This is giving us a little bit of an indication of what some of this false doctrine is. Um, you see, Paul's about to deal with this subject of... It, the day of the Lord. You see, what was happening was is that they were enduring so much persecution and so much trouble that they just kind of gave up on witnessing. They gave up on living for God. They gave up. They just kind of like, you know what? Said, hey, I'm going to turn into a prepper, build a bunker, and, and hide out. And because they felt... Because false teachers came in and said, well, obviously, this is the day of the Lord, and this is what you're supposed to be doing. Hide yourself. Now, they were enduring these great things. But Paul says, let me tell you a little bit about that. God's a righteous judge. He will judge. Verse 7, and to you who are troubled, rest with us. When the Lord Jesus shall be revealed, that's future, from heaven with his mighty angels. In flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God, and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, just right there, we know that this is not the rapture that Paul talked about, the catching up uh, uh, that he talked about in First Thessalonians chapter four. We know that because we know that it was the Lord that descended, and we met him in the air. In chapter 4 of 1 Thessalonians, here he's coming with his mighty angels. This is a description, if you will, of the day of the Lord. This is at the end of the tribulation time that Jesus is going to come back. He's going to set foot in Jerusalem. He's going to make his enemies his footstool with a flaming fire okay, and his angels. And he is going to put out Satan the Antichrist and all that kind of stuff that we uh, are familiar with. And he is going to bring vengeance on them that know not the gospel. They did not obey the gospel. Look at verse 9. Who shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power. When he shall come to be glorified in his saints and to be admired in all them that believe... Because our testimony among you was believed in that day. Wherefore, also we pray always for you, that our God would count you worthy of this calling. Here's the calling. The calling isn't for you to go be a prepper. The calling is for you to fulfill all the good pleasure of his goodness 
and the work of faith with power. Why? That the name of the Lord Jesus may be glorified in you. Okay? And ye in him, according to the grace of God and the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, here's verse 2. So we've got all that kind of, there was a false teaching. They came in. They said the day of the Lord is here. And now Paul begins to talk to them. And what did this false teaching, what did this hopelessness, what did this constant persecution, what did this constant trouble bring them? Notice verse 1 of chapter 2. He says, now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ and by by our gathering together unto him. I think that's the tribute. That's the rapture there. He says that ye be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled. See, they were enduring such things and they had the wrong viewpoint of what was going on during the day. And so they were easily shaken in their mind and troubled. They were anxious. What's going to happen? How come God isn't coming back now? How come they're persecuting us, but God is not saving us? How come he's not coming down and punishing the wicked doers? And so they were troubled in their minds. It's estimated that 284 million people in the world have anxiety disorder. The National Institutes of Health uh, estimates that 20% of Americans had an anxiety disorder in the past year. Probably because of COVID. Probably because the anxiety has increased. I know suicide has increased. So Paul carefully and compassionately, he's addressing these believers who were shaken in mind and troubled. And so God wants to give them a little bit of help. He says that you be not soon shaken. And so he was addressing these people. They were persecuted. They were threatened. They were attacked. They were spitefully pressured by those who opposed them. Now listen. Have you ever heard the phrase, I can't take enough? I can't take anymore? You ever heard that? I heard it on the news last week in New Zealand. I guess it's the safest place. They have no guns. And some guy went into a store and sliced up six people, killed six people with a knife in New Zealand. I think that's what it was. Uh, they, were, they, they got to the place to where whatever was going on in their life Their mind was troubled. Um, When I was a young person, there was a term that came uh, to be commonly used, and you'll you'll understand it. It says, "I'm go." They're going postal. You ever heard of that before? Where did that come from? That came from the postal workers that were shoved in these little things. They went crazy. Their workplace was whatever. And they mass shootings and the and all. So they said, "Oh, he's going postal." That's where that came from. Because they were just troubled in their mind. Whatever they were doing, uh, they had no hope. They it was a a, a mindless. Uh, it was a dead end. Whatever it would be. But here were these believers in Second Th- Thessalonians. Here now they took a bold stand for their faith. They left their idols. They left everything and they followed the one true God. But they were assaulted on the left and on the right. And I think it took a toll spiritually and physically and probably to their mental well-being. Somebody says there's a problem of personal paranoia. Paranoia is defined as the troubled mind. They were constantly fearful of harm. They were fearful of loss. They were fearful of danger. Their fears, if you will, overtook them and they were shaken. Paul was gone at this time and they were left, if you will. And false teachers came in and guess what? The absence, they they, they were, they were, if you will, willing for anything, anyone to give an answer to them because Paul said there in chapter one that they were suffering. 
So I'm thinking about this. What were they suffering from? Really fear. They were shaken in their mind. They had different thoughts. They, their mind was troubled, if you will. And we need a little bit of cure, if you will. We we're afflicted by fear. Our faith and our trust in God becomes little. Our prayer time is difficult. We think trusting God, it thinks that's, that's so impossible. Why? How can I trust God? Look at all these things that are going on around me. We don't sleep very well. Many people, when they have anxiety or they're, they're, they have a, a troubled mind, they find themselves having no appetite. They don't eat very well. They, they, you can see it in their faces, if you will. They're just anxious. And these anxiety disorders can be a stronghold in your mind and it can become uh, something that begins to enslave you and begins to control you. So much to the fact that we are not trusting in God. Our minds have been shaken. Often we think negative when we're in that mindset. Nothing's good. Nothing's good. It's all bad. It's kind of like, you know, when people start protesting America. I say, well, why don't you go down there? It's not too bad here. <laughs> why don't you go over to India? Why don't you go over to Afghanistan and try to be a Christian? Well, why don't you go to some third world country where you just might get robbed every day? And so sometimes we complain about something, but we miss out because we're so fearful and, and we have all this anxiety. It causes us to always think negative. We always expect the worst to happen instead of the best. Now, I'm a realist. I really am. I'm just a realist. You know what? There, things, bad things happen. But I don't want to go through life always, always anticipating when, the, when does the shoe drop. I don't want to have that mindset. And here these people have lost faith in what Paul told them. He says, brother, don't worry. In, ch in chapter 1 or 4 of uh, uh, 1 Thessalonians, he says, brother, I don't want you to worry about those that have died before. Guess what? God's going to bring them back up with that day. When the trumpet comes, we're going to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. And that's the comforting part in chapter 4 of 1 Thessalonians. And now he's saying, listen. You don't need to be fearful. You don't need to lose hope. People with anxiety disorders, I know, and, 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 and their mind is, uh, if you will, uh, shaken. What happens is, is that, you know, they always think the worst could happen. They're negative at times. They don't sleep very well. The nights are long. The mornings are difficult. Let's just be careful. Don't, don't give in to the captive power of anxiety. I think we ought to bring every thought captive to the obedience of the Lord. If you look here in chapter 2, he says that ye be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled. He says neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter, as from us, as that the day of Christ is at hand. So he was saying, the day of Christ is not at hand. This is not the battle of Armageddon. This is regular persecution, suffering. Paul says, if you suffer for as a Christian, be thankful. Ye all that shall live godly shall suffer what? Persecution. So just because we have some persecution, just because we have a government the way that it is, just because we whatever, it doesn't necessarily mean that, oh, the day of the Lord is here. Let's hide out. Let's, uh, I like what my Bible commentary, my Bible says, he says, um, he says, Paul recounts the events that must first take place. He begins to do that. He says, laboring for the gospel rather than lazy resignation. You know, oftentimes what we do is we say, what diff what's the difference in my life? Nothing changes. Nothing changes. Why don't we just join them? 
But everyone else is doing it. Why don't I just do it? What's the big deal? And so we get this lazy resignation where, you know what? Nothing I do is going to matter. Well, I'm here to tell you, Paul was telling them emphatically, don't let anybody trouble you in your mind by spirit. That means don't let them tell you, hey, I've got a divine revelation. I've got another spirit. Now, this is the truth. Paul says, no, listen to what I told you before. He says, or by word. Hey, if somebody comes and gives you a different word, don't believe it. He says, nor by letter as from us. He says, and even if they uh, forge my signature, don't believe them. I'm telling you now, this is what you need to be looking for. And so we say, guys, we know that you've endured much, but we're not there yet. There's still hope. We need to be busy about doing the things of the Lord. And he says here, uh, he says, as that the day of Christ is at hand. He says, it's not at hand yet. Verse 3, let no man deceive you by any means. He says, don't let anyone deceive you in this. He says in verse 3, for that day shall not come. What day? That's the day of the Lord. That's the end of the tribulation. That's the battle of Armageddon. He says, except there come a falling away first, and that the man of sin be revealed the son of perdition. Now, we understand that as the Antichrist. And we have a description in verse 4, verse 5, all the way through 7. Verse 8, he's mentioned. Verse 8, And then shall the wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. That's the battle of Armageddon. Okay? And they're going to do signs and wonders in verse 9. Now notice, the solution is, is that you and I have to recognize that our minds can be shook if we go about life with no hope. Listen, let me tell you, we have what's called a blessed hope. You know what that's called? That's the catching up of the body of Christ. Did you know that you and I, were living here, and we have hope? And the world might go this way, and the world might go that way, but we have a God that in His knowledge is ready for us. And we're ready for Him. And whenever that time comes, we are going to meet Him in the clouds. And the Bible says, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. And then guess what's going to happen? Wrath is going to come on this earth. And those things that wonder why God ain't judging that sinner, why ain't God ain't judging that sinner, That will all happen according to the plan of the Lord. So what's the solution? Just bring your thoughts into obedience to the Lord. Have faith that God's in control. Do we? Do we know God's in control? You know, oftentimes we think, I'm in control. I've got this. Uh, we need to remember God is in control. What about what's going on in the world? Well, we know that greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. So we know that God's got the victory here. And so we can have faith in that. We can trust in that. Now, you know, I'm your pastor. And uh, by all no means do I have uh, a great mind of prophecy. But one of the things that I think I see in Scripture is is that the next thing that you and I have to look forward to is meeting the Lord in the air. I think the church, that's it. That's the next thing. I don't think there's anything that has to happen before you and I meet Him in the air. And all those that went on before, all those that died before, and they're in the ground, guess what? Their bodies could be reunited with their souls, and then we're going to meet Him with the Lord, and we're going to be unified, and we're going to have unity, and we're going to be one in one, and one of one another. It's going to be an amazing thing, and we're going to meet the Lord in the air. So what should we be doing now? Definitely not having a troubled mind. Not having our minds shaken with what's going on around us in this world. Now, I could kind of understand if you think, hey, a third of the world's going to go down and earthquakes are going to go happen and this and that. And so we always kind of look at the current events. Guess what? There's been earthquakes going on forever. 
forever. You say, but now there's more of a... No, probably the fact that now we can kind of have a meter for them. <laughs> They've been always going on. So for you and I, we just need to say, okay, what can I do now? So my calling, according to chapter 1, is verse number 11. It says, count it worthy of this calling, what? To fulfill all the good pleasure of his goodness and the work of faith with power. Why? That the name of the Lord Jesus Christ may be glorified in you and ye in him. That talks about our fellowship. You remember what Paul said in Philippians chapter number 3, verse 10? He says, that I may know him. Him and the power of his resurrection. And then there's something else. And the fellowship of his suffering. So I'm supposed to know him and I'm supposed to bring him honor and glory. And in me, his life is to be lived. That his name would be glorified according to the grace of God. Now, we've got to see the future also as it's going to be bright. Now, I know, uh, I know there's some not so bright things on the television. I think there's some sadness on there. I think there's a lot of things if we would flip out our phone. All we're seeing is heartache, hardship, and that can shake our minds. I'm not saying let's put our head in the sand and ignore what's going on around the world. Let's not do that. But let's have faith in God. The Bible says that God has not given us the spirit of fear, right? If he hasn't given it to us, who gave it to us? Yeah. So here you are, if you're fearful, and if you're run by uh, having a shaken mind, this is not God's will for you. You say, but I'm worried about the persecution. Well, focus on that. What's the purpose? What's God doing? What's happening? And then recognize, Jesus is coming. Jesus is coming. Let's be steadfast. Look what he says here uh, in verse 15 of chapter 2, and then, then we're done tonight. I said, I told the girls, I said, well, I was kind of talking all afternoon. I had a, was talking to some people, you know, and he was like, I said, so maybe I won't be able to preach for 45. They're like, it's okay, Dad. You can do like 10 minutes. You can do, go ahead, Dad. You know, 15, 10, 15, 10, you know, no. So I'm maybe just a little early tonight. But look at first. Therefore, brethren, stand fast and hold the traditions which you've been taught. So Paul's saying, listen, guys, you just need to stand fast. We taught you, whether by word or our epistle, here it is, verse 16. Now our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God, even our Father, which hath loved us and hath given us everlasting consolation and good hope through what grace so salvation is something that we need to hold on to and recognize that because god loved us he's given us an everlasting consolation i don't know about you um i have uh tracy and i've been blessed with four children four beautiful daughters beautiful daughters and the delivery time, you know, it was probably like, you know, 48 hours each time, you know, something like that, right, honey? Long time. It felt like 48 hours. It was really rough on me. <clears throat> I'm getting to a point here. I'm getting to a point. Listen, I'm trying not to get off track here. Okay, here's the point. As a mama goes through that pain in childbirth, she knows it's going to be a baby. It's going to be glorious. The future is going to be bright. This pain is just for a moment. The baby's coming. 
Then they become teenagers and we rethink the whole thing, okay? Yeah. But we love our teenagers. Does it able to have gray hair, you know? We love it. But just recognize that glory is to be there. Notice it says that the Lord, he loved us and he's given us. Re- remember, God hath not given us a spirit of fear. God didn't give us that spirit. But what did he give us? He hath loved us and hath given us everlasting consolation. That's like consolation. That means comfort. I mean, it's okay. You're going to be okay. You're going to be okay. But I feel some pressure. You're going to be okay. I'm hurting. It's going to be better. I'm sad. You'll get happy. It'll be okay. And so Paul had to trail them. Listen, you're not in the day of the Lord. The day of the Lord comes as a thief in the night. That means that you don't know when it is and you're not there. So why don't we recognize that God loved us. He gave us his everlasting and a good hope through grace. And he says in verse 17, comfort your hearts and establish you in every good word. And he says what? Work. So, hey, Christian, are you persecuted? I don't know about you. Sometimes have you ever noticed that when um, uh, I've had an anxiety attack once and I couldn't do anything. I got nothing done. I was paralyzed by fear. But we're supposed to, according to what it says, be comforted, establish you with every good word, and work. So God has not given us that spirit. He's given us the spirit of love, joy, peace, sound mind, all that, okay? And so let's not be soon shaken in our minds let the lord teach us that it's gonna be okay we trust the lord for the next thing that we might meet him in the air and so shall we ever be with the lord let's pray together appreciate you tonight listening to the word of god and encourage you to pray for one another we've got several folks out not feeling great and um pray for their health and their strength and And let's go out there, be healthy, let's be careful, and be prayerful for one another. We love you. So let's pray together. Lord Jesus, we pray that you would uh, be with our church family, those that are just feeling ill, those that are recovering, those that are going through it. And Lord, we think about this message that we talked about, about our mind that is troubled and shaken. Lord, I pray that you would help us establish our mind upon you and help us to comfort our hearts with truth on every good word and every good deed. Help us to do that, Lord. Lord, guide and direct us, Lord, and bring us back, Lord, on Wednesday, Lord, our our fellowship time. I'm looking forward to that. God and direct us and bless us as only you can. We pray this in your name. Amen. Amen. God bless you, folks. You are dismissed.